welcome back to the channel. Part two of the wiring series on the Camaro. This one is gonna be all about power and ground and kind of getting everything going. Okay, so we're getting going. I am making the alternator wire right now. I'm just using, I buy these crimps in bulk, you know, uninsulated crimps in bulk. And then I use these crimpers that I got from Amazon and do the crimps and heat shrink them. This one's actually gonna be the alternator cable. So the alternator cable on this one, I'm gonna keep it underneath the car. It doesn't need to go into the car for any reason cause this has the cutoff switches in the back, alternators up here. So I'm just gonna go from the alternator underneath the car, follow the brake lines back up and over the axle to the cutoff switch that's in the rear bumper. The battery terminals, which would be, you know, the positive in the ground that come from the cutoff switch and the battery are gonna come up inside the car and I'm gonna have some bulkhead connectors. I'm gonna be working on that next. I'll kind of show you these as I get this lined up and get the power and ground situated and kind of talk about how I do it all. Okay, alternator cable is done. You can kind of see it right here. The threaded part on the top of the alternator is kind of hard to get to, but then it goes right behind through a little hole right here. And then let me show you underneath. Here it comes. I have it in that Alex Tech sleeving, like I talked about in my first video. The steering shaft's close right here, so I went ahead and put a P-clamp right here, bolted it to the block. I also have the oil line right here as well, so I got those bundled together. And then it comes along that, and then it comes over. Let me show you. Oh! Okay. So, you can see it comes over across. There's actually going to be another line that comes across right here too, an oil feed line, so I'll be able to secure that. But then I have it on the brake lines coming through here. And then it goes along the part of the cage right there. The brake line also goes along this part of the cage. Keep sliding to the back. And then the brake line and stuff come up right here. Another P-clamp to secure everything so this can't move. No lines can rub. And then it comes through here. It goes up and over the axle. Sorry, this is probably terrible quality here as I slide around underneath the car. But you can see I got it P-clamped as it goes up and over the axle. P-clamped again, just secured. And then there's a roll cage bar back there that's secured too. And then it's just hanging down. I'm gonna hook it up to the cutoff switch later. So now on to the other battery cables. I am now working on the other side, which would go from like the battery to the firewall bulkheads and then to the starter. This is the starter cable I just built. I want to show you so I anything outside of the car I'm sleeving with the sleeve this one I put the terminals on crimp those myself and then I put on heat shrink over the crimp area and then I put the sleeve on and then I use that Tessa harness tape on the ends to hold the sleeve on really good so this is going to go from the distribution block underneath the car to the starter you can kind of see real quick the distribution blocks there on the floor. They're staggered a little bit so the terminals can come off good on those. And then I actually have these wires ran all the way to the back. And I started hooking them up. I'm gonna, I'll show you all this once I finish up on this. I got the wires ran back here. I'm about to do the hot side and the grounds, take them through a grommet to where the cutoff switch is and then finish hooking up the battery. But I'll kind of show you that as I uh, keep going. So I got the cables done underneath the car. You can see the firewall bulkheads come through right here. I have a positive and a ground. They're both uh, sleeved. The positive, like I discussed, just goes up to the starter and the ground goes to the block over on this side. A lot of people don't do their grounds like this. A lot of people will ground back at the battery and then they will ground at the motor to the chassis. So they'll go from the battery to the chassis and then they'll go from the engine to the chassis. You'll find out you will have a lot less problems with your electrical if you take your ground all the way from the battery up to the engine and ground your engine directly to the battery. I also ground the battery to the chassis as well. 
So there'll be two leads coming off the battery. Um, one goes to the chassis, one comes up here to the engine. Some people even take it a step farther and take their engine ground and also put it to the chassis as well. Um, I don't think you can have too many grounds. I've never needed that. I haven't had any problems, but I did notice a ton of improvements when I started grounding all my batteries directly to the engine. Helps a lot. Okay, so I finished tidying up back here in the back. You can see the two leads, the positive and the ground from the distribution block, which you can see the distribution up there. Um, they come back, tuck the wheel well, come back and around the battery. Um, the positive from here goes to the cutoff switch. And then like we discussed earlier, two leads. One of these goes up to the engine ground. The other one goes underneath to a chassis ground. So I got these all taped up real good, zip tied, they're clean, and then they go into sleeving right before they go outside. I got a grommet right here in the side of the carbon where they all go out nice and snug and tight. So it should be sealed up. And then let's take a peek underneath what I did. Here is the underneath side of the car. So the three loomed wires come through right here. The two powers, I got P-clamped here to support them. They're not rubbing. They look good and they come to the back. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's three cables back here. These are all gonna go to the cutoff switch when I get it. And then here's the ground. I just welded a bolt to the chassis right here. There's a plate right there, I think, where something used to be. But anyways, cleaned it up, welded the bolt to it, touched it up paint-wise, and then put, you know, a terminal on the ground and put the ground. So the battery comes here, and then uh, one of the battery leads also goes up front, which you already know. So that kind of finishes up for back here for the power and ground stuff. A last few words about power and ground when you're doing your car. The main ECU needs to be powered and grounded directly to the battery. So the fuel tech is built into this pro harness. The Holly has its own connector that has power and ground, but this kind of applies to all ECUs. It doesn't really matter. You want to take that power and ground. So on this fuel tech, it comes along here and comes back here and here it is. You want to take this directly to the battery. It's got battery terminals on it. Don't put this at a distribution block. It needs to go directly to the battery. Also on smart coils like this car has, or any car that you're doing a smart coil, a lot of times you will do a quote unquote big wire kit on it, but that's where you have, you know, tons of power. These coils can take a lot of power and they'll have really large leads for power and ground. This is the coil harness. You can see it's got a relay and fuse for each bank and then it has its own power lead as well. This also needs to go directly to the battery. Here it is. This needs to go to the battery. Don't put this on a distribution block. Don't share this ground anywhere else. This needs to go directly to the battery. That is really important. On your coil harnesses though, since I'm talking about those, your coil harness will also have a secondary ground that needs to go to the cylinder head. Fuel tech labels these cylinder head. Um, but yeah, so you need one ground to the cylinder head for each bank of coils. And then the power in the ground for the coils needs to go all the way back to the battery. That's super important. A lot of people like to shortcut that and put these grounds on a chassis ground somewhere or get the power from somewhere else. Don't do it. It's not, it's not good. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna work good. You're gonna have issues. It may work okay, but it's better this way. Trust me. Um, we know the relay system's going right here. Power for that, you can get you know, like one of these distribution panels. So I need, you know, a decent amount of power to this. I think I'm gonna run a six gauge cable to this board and I am just gonna get it in my distribution right there. It'll just come straight up, go to that. That ground I'll put to a good chassis ground that I'll make here inside the car for that. That is totally acceptable. It's mainly just the ECU and the coils need to go all the way back to the battery. Um, everything else you can kind of get it where it's appropriate. So I think this is gonna kind of finish up my power and ground. Um, if you have any questions on power and ground or wiring a car, ask away. I'm gonna be in the comments helping people out and going through this. And yeah, stay tuned for part three. I'm uh, starting it now. We're gonna be laying out the harnesses and starting the relay board. So stay tuned for that video. Just kidding, it's not over. If you made it this far, here is a little special sneak peek of what's gonna be coming in the next video. Check out that carbon panel. Oof, looks so good. So yeah, next video is gonna be all about carbon and the wiring harnesses getting it knocked out.